for us sir. I'm doing okay this morning. How are you guys doing? Doing good, Alana. Wow, okay. Prophetess Alana. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> All right, church, city, and state. So we got um, some messages I put in here and um, I'm recording. God bless everybody that was able to come on on the spur of the moment. Cause you know, there's a lot of changes going on. I will not um, make excuses. I'm glad that you could make it so that you could get this information and mull over it for yourself. Um, the information here is gonna help. Um, and then I have some um, affirmations or something to help um, with the transition. Cause a lot of people don't understand when they're in between um, religion and spirituality and what that means. So here um, uh, is one affirmation. It says, angels orchestrate my dreams. Now you gotta think on your dreams to help me with my life. My dreams and visions are easy to remember and understand. I accept that myself. I take action based on angelic messages. I recognize the value of the past and use those experiences as stepping stones for the future. Um, stepping stones, past and future is personal and collective. What can you do with past and use it as stepping stones for the future? Because everything that we're talking about is stepping stones. History, the stars and the moon. I create miracles in my life. Many people with abundant funds need the goods of services I offer. I consciously create circumstances to fulfill my dreams and destiny. I am open to abundance and recognize value in work, great and small. Important to recognize the value of your work, great and small. I accept life's impermanent nature and embrace the grieving process. I welcome the transitions that occur as a natural part of life. I adapt to my changing environment. I learn much from the experiences of change. I assist people who are challenged by change. Okay, so first Samuel. It is um, first Samuel one and 10. Waymaker is what Jesus was. Waymaker, that means that he had to pave a path. That means that it was something possibly that no one had ever done before, right? And a way maker will go through a lot of hardships because they don't really have um, something outside of them to show them the way. So you take this on for yourself. In personal lives and relationships, we're all um, discovering the way. And that means that if we believe in ourselves and that spirit of God within us, we could become successful and show others, right? And I know that there's a lot of people that will say, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that. And that's fine. It's not um, including those that don't want, but those that know that they have changes to make within themselves, understand that they have to adhere to the way maker within them. Way make her. And the reason why I bring up Waymaker is because when I read 1 Samuel this morning, I've read this book over and over again, and Samuel, one of the things that always stuck out to me was the fact that the people were crying out for a leader. They actually had rejected God. And, you know, the funny thing about this is, is they had rejected the Alpha and Omega. All through the Old Testament, you could see leaders being um, 
ostracized and um, troubled and challenged by people that even they didn't even know how to get out of slavery, you know, in Egypt. And that makes you think because when the people were challenged in their minds, they challenged the leader, right? And then we come into this time and century and we see that finally the leaders are being challenged. History is repeating itself. So my thing is what will the people do when they receive the ability to lead their own community, cities and states? Because you got to think beyond where you are and not just say, well, you know, we're in alignment. And 55 years ago in 1964, there was a, an attempt to free people. But it did not come to pass. It wasn't successful. And the reason why it wasn't successful is because the people were not ready. There was more to come concerning um, the issues. Then we, we look at this time you have predominantly a male and a female that was killed to really focus on and give information secretly. And when I say secretly, that means that it's something that you might take into consideration and think, okay, we got a male and a female that has been slayed by the police. Now it's happened to many. But sometimes you get epiphanies. And then we go back and we look at 1 Samuel around the 18th or 19th verse. And I'm going to just kind of sum it up and say that the people were asking for a king. They had rejected God. Some of us are still praying to God. Why are we praying? Because it's our belief system or is it religion? You know, we have to ask ourselves that and I'm not taking it away, but I'm asking the people to review their idea of God. Is God a part of you outside of you? Does God walk with you or walk through you? Does God talk to you or talk through you? Waymaker. Because the people asked for a king and Saul was anointed. God changed his heart. That's all in 10. You can go back to nine. God changed his heart. And when he received power, you could see as you read on that his humility had changed. Even the assignment he was given, he changed it. He changed it himself. Just because you are called does not mean that you have the power to change anything. You are called to be an oracle or a mouthpiece. And it says a lot because in heaven as it is in earth. And I speak of heaven because we have no real understanding of heavenlies, the order. Where the order is coming from is not from man. The oracle piece that stays humble to God and the will is in order to God. Defining uh, lines about religion versus spirituality. Number one, with Jesus. He stayed in alignment with community. Social justice. Now, I'm not trying to plant seeds, but I want, I want your minds to begin to think because even as you pray, sometimes the prayers are not being revealed or manifested or we because it's still an era of the God that we serve. Do we serve the kings of the world or the king of kings? And, you know, I want to say this here. Wherever there's separation and division, God is not there. So we want to look at the fact that, you know, other cultures have been separated, such as, you know, the Muslims and um, Buddhism, you know, go across the board. I don't really care what anybody thinks about what I'm saying because to thine own self be true. The truth will set you free. As I keep blinders on, then I'm blind to the ways of the world and the secrets that's been covered up. I don't just want to hear other people see it. 
or say it. I want to be able to know for myself. So Jesus, I see social justice. And I see people that were threatened by him. How many people see that out there in the world right now? This has been a chain of events that could awaken people to see that they had power, but they did not utilize it. They also gave their power to, some people call it the devil. I don't know, the Antichrist. We all have it, but see, we can't discover the Antichrist in us until we lay it all down, until we have been broken. That's when we start acknowledging that there is an antichrist that actually, and anti means that I don't believe in God. I believe in myself. So don't take it to the, to the, uh, um, to a offense and say, well, she's calling me the devil. Listen, I'll call myself that because if I am not in the right spirit, I will perpetrate those uh, past characteristics of myself. Now, they gave saw power because the people wanted a king. What do we want today? That's the prayer. We talked about personal um, issues yesterday and we prayed about them. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Righteousness is about changing your opinion of yourself and things. If you were persuaded to think a way that is not productive and conducive to you living, you got to think about that. And maybe there's some changes that still need to be made. See, I talk with a lot of people and one of the things that I know for myself is that I had to provoke myself to change the way that I thought. That was from religion on up. And I'm not spiting the religion, but if anybody ever listened and they have a problem with it, I'm provoking. Because if your people do not prosper, then where is God? Now, it's not up to you to prosper for them because they got to catch the hook and go out and fish for themselves. But if no one ever took upon themselves to be responsible to pray for other people, the people will learn how to pray. If the people uh, were not uh, given the ability to have food, they will learn how to eat because they'll go out and find it. And so on and so forth. And that sounds a little hard because we always been in a place of codependency where we were relying on someone to tell us the way. And I am not saying that we don't need mentors, but what we don't need again is, and this also goes along yesterday, we talked about leaders not gossiping, why you need independence in your personal relationship with God and why you need to get that information and possibly take it on out the gates. That's Deuteronomy 5 and 6. The Old Testament is not taught a whole lot in the entirety of it. So you have people that were following Moses out and he was to take them into the promise. No one really knows what the promise is. We had some information. We could document what we wanted our promise to be. But how about some people feel tricked because some of the promise ain't arrived to them. Now, I think the promise is and has arrived, but I think people miss it. Because when I look at promise, I look at promise for myself and people, which is freedom. Freedom. And if we are free, then that means that we're free in all areas of our lives. Number one, mentally, we're free to voice our opinion about what we see that is not right. Social injustice was something we went along with because we were born into injustice. But if you are going to become free or have salvation, you can't just dwell on your personal life forever. You gotta wake up. 
and see that your personal life may have de been derived out of the kings and queens that set up a system and your forefathers that went along with the system, which led to you following the system. So what is the system? System. The system has shown us that we could make it maybe halfway, but most people haven't made it all the way into the promise. And so the parallel of this story, I seen history lining up with from um, 1 Samuel and uh, 1 Samuel 10. And what, what that was is definitely that the people had uh, rejected God and they were calling. And so God gave them what they asked for. And that's something. He gives you what you asked for. Now, sometimes you don't see that because you be talking and praying, but then it comes in another time, not immediately, and it don't look the same or you forgot your prayer, right? But if we just look at the collective right now, and people are going to vote for anybody, there's a problem. because you're settling. You know that it's not good for you, but you're gonna go ahead and take it anyway. That's just like taking something that you was just crying about two weeks ago. That wasn't no good for you. Now I'm just giving thought, provoke. Because a lot of people is not gonna think like this, not like uh, I'm thinking. And, you know, I'm not going to keep it a secret anymore, the way that I think. Because I don't believe that it's that hard to look at life and say, this is not it and stand for it. And, and you know, to actually begin to build groups that discuss this. Because the only way that you're going to get freedom is through majorities. There's been minorities and people didn't like the word minority, but as you are the minority, you have power. And minority is in the way that you think. Because I could go in and I could put, someone go on and look up Alice Bailey 10 point conspiracy and put the link there. See, education is not always the education of the system. How about all of the system is showing itself as broken? Oh, it showed before, but no one can really idea, uh, you know, identify with brokenness until they see it. They'll say that someone that teaches spiritual things because they don't have all the material things. This is a world you shouldn't you shouldn't listen to them. Listen, a person with spiritual information uh, and and wisdom has more to give and and gain a, wor a world than anybody that is built on material, because material is temporary. All of the synagogues and churches that were built are, are struggling pretty much right now. It's not a joke, nothing that I would laugh at, but it's in the Bible that this would happen. Number one, we call on the name of Jesus, but we have created our lives after the world. This is an oxymoron. So my prayer today, is that we would actually wake up because we're in the awakening now you know the great awakening and that we would be touched and influenced by the spirit of freedom because it's time over in acts six or seven you can read both chapters and see that it said after 367 years something like that um that the, the people who have been in bondage would be free. And, and many people have read it, but they would read it in a religious context and not spiritual. You cannot get free unless you are spiritually connected. That's where freedom is. Freedom is in the spiritual realm because the rebirthing takes place. 
The rebirthing takes place and then you come here again as a new person, a new creation. We have been creatures according to Romans 8, but we come into the creation of God. As a creation as recreated, is recreated, it follows the way of God. And the way of God, all of his truth is not given, which means that the creation can't just follow people. Man will err because it is not perfect. And as we can see, the King Samuel, you read those chapters, you'll find that the King Samuel, he went against the word of God. I think it's just one or two chapters after he got the anointing. Here we see the world and the leaders saying that in God we trust. But we got a question, who is their God? And when you get that question answered, cause see, I ain't gonna say nothing. You know, some people been saying, well, it's hopeless. I can't do nothing, but you can. What you do is solidify your thoughts on leadership. And when you do that, you figure out what part of your life adds to what Jesus was really um, giving. Because if he was the way shower, way, I'm gonna show you a way and I'm gonna show. It means that it was no design that people could actually apprehend in the world to follow. They would have to follow spiritually. Not to mention that John the Baptist had already given the world type of concept by teaching the people, giving them the word. So you move that over here. And now you got, what was Jesus' purpose if he was going to do the same thing that John did? And then when you get that information, then you begin to reveal the truth. Not from me, but from your heart to you. Amen? Because the parallel with leadership, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, number one diameter, the, the, the parallel, it cannot change. You cannot be a man following your own self and you are lined up with the King of Kings. I, I will remind you to look at also, because I hope that y'all study, because see, the thing about this here is, is that Mm, you've been religiously, you know, um, rejuvenated or imparted into or stirred up in this emotion, right? Well, what happened to the blessing, right? And so maybe you didn't get the blessing because you didn't see the whole picture. You got, you know, some, some, sometimes you got to see the whole picture. And then that means that you got to let go of the picture that you had in mind. So you got the religious Sadducees, um, the Pharisees. They're always there, right? They're also there with Pontus and all of them. Does that bring a question to mind? Because it always did for me. I mean, that question was answered. But whenever I see the Roman emperor with the Jews and um, the other religious people, that's where the defining moment comes in. And I begin to say, okay, these are the ones, they didn't want anything new to come. So they killed the spirit of freedom, salvation in Jesus, but they didn't know, like he was saying, on the third day, he's going to rose again, rise again. Because they didn't understand really how Jesus was working. And the key thing here is your understanding of the person that you're following spiritually. And I mean, uh, in the books 
And then when it's brought to you, are you ready for freedom or are you still afraid to embrace freedom? Because if you're afraid to embrace it, then that means that you, you know, you're, you're not ready. Then how many other people are not ready? And then we go backwards in time because no one is ready. They don't want the responsibility that Jesus actually had. Luke 21, he's talking to the people and telling them the times is going to come. It's just not a story. I mean, I heard many people say it's a story. It is a story to people that don't believe. That's fine if you don't believe. We don't, we don't want to um, impress our thoughts upon anyone. What we want is for those that believe to um, carry themselves on over into the promise and understand what freedom um, really is and salvation. All right. Religion and state and politics, they should not be together. They said it, they were not. This is the first thing to understand is how your world functions instead you know, systemically, why do you have these big churches? Systemically. Now, you can do whatever you want to, but I'm saying to people that are, you know, in a mind to be provoked and to think beyond what they see and what they've done. And it's not to be upset because, see, there's a lot of people here that are able to bring the truth into light for the ones that have built churches after the paradigm of religion and politics. You can, you can, you can shed a lot of truth. When, when the time comes, you're able to shed a lot of truth because leaders are going to be seeking leaders. They, they, they're going to need help. That doesn't mean that they're bad people or they're wrong. I think that the process needs uh, stepping stones for everyone. The process of life gives us all stepping stones. And so, you know, wrapping this up, freedom. And what you believe, what you were taught throughout time, is that really your truth? You believed in freedom. Most people do say they want freedom, but you know, it's people that got to work for it to happen. And uh, I, I find the Bible to be true. What I find is, is that most people don't practice uh, the scriptures where Paul said the letter kills and the spirit brings life. So Ashley put the battle cry of Christ blog. Yeah. Okay. So Alice Bailey, when you go to read, don't be, um, don't misunderstand the publishing um, types because the publishers that published, published her information, she, uh, they, they, they have Luciferian publishers. And so if you're not afraid of living in this world and um, your political leaders and watching TV, then you shouldn't be afraid to read this. All right. So I'm going to close this up with prayer. Any questions before I um, close up? No. Okay. So. Father, we just thank you for uh, these young women. We thank you for all that were able to rush onto this line um, in the prompting of wisdom and understanding coming forth. And we thank you for that wisdom and understanding even coming forth in them. We thank you for the time that you are sharing and supping with them. Thank you for the open hearts and you pouring in your healing rays and the rivers of life reviving and restoring them right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for taking off the bands of illusion and giving them 
eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying. Thank you that no weapon formed against them will prosper and that your blood covers them and their families in this season of change. Thank you for the whole armor that we can gird up with the whole armor and find that our feet are shod in the gospel. Thank you that you cast down every weapon of warfare right now. Uh, you bind up the weapons of warfare against their minds, their hearts, and their souls. You break every, every dart that's been thrown. Anything that has been held up in their lives concerning monies and um, housing, uh, the needs that they have. You said that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We shall not want because you, Almighty, you are our shepherd. So you release the blessings in their lives mentally, spiritually, and physically. We come up against anxiety, depression, stress in this season in the name of Jesus. And we align with the word. We thank you that by your stripes, we are healed inside and outside. Thank you for the miracles that you wrought within our lives. Thank you that everything that was held up, locked up and blocked up is being released because we believe. Thank you for the belief of freedom, total freedom. Thank you for leaders that are aligned with you. Thank you for the unity of the male and the female energies in this season. Thank you that it is not an illusion that these people have left the earth to identify with what you're doing. People are standing up for men and women of different cultures to show their homage to you and what you're saying from heaven into earth. Thank you for healing those families that have lost loved ones in this season. Thank you for confidence and encouragement as you release more of your presence. Thank you that we can take time with you and know that time with you matters more than any work venture. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing in our lives. Thank you for the collective. Thank you for our ability to come together. Thank you for mothers and fathers working from home so that they can raise their own children and their spirits will be upon them. Thank you for the corrections in the houses and in the homes and the correction in families. Thank you for healing in families right now, the dynamics shifting. And many people have complained because of what you've allowed here. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you that out of chaos, you created life and peace. Thank you that there is no peace without war. Your word says it. And so we thank you that the spirit of deception and defeat, even manipulation, is bound and broken, set a fire to defeat and deception. The spirit of lies and manipulation, let your fire burn it away. In the name of Jesus, heal the hearts of your people that have been broken. Seal their hearts up with your love and presence in them that they will be able to move in a new way. Walk and talk in your way, believing that all things are possible. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Kim, thank you for this. This was um, wonderful. I actually had a revelation um, during this. So thank you. Okay. Amen. Amen. Any, anybody else before I, um, God bless us to walk the path that's destined for us and believe in ourselves, not because anybody else believes in us, but because we believe in ourselves and the rest will follow. I don't, I don't know if anybody sees that Jesus, he, they, they spoke of someone coming, but don't you know that he probably had to have confidence? See, I just see him as a real person and people see him as something else. And that's okay how they see him, but I had to become a friend to him. I mean, that is the word. And then I became his sister, but now we are one. 
because I understand that the crisis in the heart. Every ego, shata. Arabo sekera shandro sarabo sheke tararabo sendere bo kuro shebeke the powers of the ego roshebeke taya e lebeke shandro roso torebeke shikata take that off shata ego trata rosha no other god before me you see when your ego is prevalent shata yerebo seketa robo so no ma seketa God cannot work in your life. Shenderebo sekita roso bokota. Thank you. No more ego. Leaders cannot function in the ego. Because if they do, they cannot be used. And I'm not saying that they've never been used. I'm simply saying, hey, laba si koro shata, you. Humility, Shandro, Sotorebe Kesa. Humility. Humility to know that you don't know everything. Humility to be able to say, I don't know. Humility to be okay with, I don't know. This is not a show. It's the unveiling of situations that people never ever thought would happen coming in the next 60 days. Your prayers will keep you in alignment with what God has for you going into the new year. And it's not about fear. Revelation tells us that there would be a time that was coming. Luke 21, when you read it, you can become afraid, but it's already been here, it's here. And so if you feel good, about what you see, then continue to pray. Because a lot of people become afraid. Afraid of what? Accepting the truth? The country that we live in has been in a fault way before we came into this world. What can we do about it? Look at ways that we can add to better it. And so then the universe it compliments and it gives us and it blesses us. And I will say it praises us because when we praise it, it praises us. We are one with the universe. Even when we're out of alignment, we are one. So with us being so, so connected, yet disconnected. And when I say disconnected, I mean when my thoughts are not in alignment with what the universe is really saying, God, Christ, Buddha, Muhammad, Krishna, whoever's religion you follow. And I, you know, you got to get out of this offense of saying that they're, you know, oh, that's out of order. Listen, you need to read. Some people don't even know that Jesus exists, exists now, but they're having spiritual encounters in the area that they live in, such as the rainforest. I need some help. Once I was a child, but when I became an adult, I thought like one. We got a lot of children going on as 50 and 60 year old people. Discrimination, separation everywhere. And someone wants to tell you that you're wrong. And the reason why I continuously say that is because people that have thoughts that are not of this world need to be able to speak out. The conformity, no. Romans talks about conformity. So what, where are we at? Romans 12, conformity. Hmm. You see, this is not religion. This, this here word that, you know, Paul took on and, and Christ, that, you know, there's a religious connotation and the spirit of religion is there because as it was hand down, that's the way it was given to us. Break the power of religion. 
be ye not of this world, but be ye transformed. Be transformed. Don't be the same. Be okay with being different. Be okay with it. All right, Kim, that's enough. God bless. All right. I'm going to send this recording over to you guys and please share it because there's a lot of people that are in bondage to their own self-belief. Freedom is believing in what you believe rather than what other people believe. That's where it begins. You feel good about knowing that you believe that social injustice can end. All of these people begin to come together and they begin to do things to bring the healing of separation and divide. And that's what I have to say. So email me and tell me uh, your thoughts and um, be blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.